Hello and welcome back to My Mom's Basement with Robbie and Clem. Another quick hitter in My Mom's Basement because we've got some breaking news. Sirens, emergency, signals going off, all of that in the nerd realm because we have a new, well, two new CEOs of DC, basically, because they're, they're splitting the duty. They said, listen, we can't hire a Kevin Feige. There's only one hat man. We got to split the duty between two people. It's Peter Safran, who a lot of people are like, who? I don't know who that is, whatever. He's a producer. It and doesn't matter who Peter Safran is. Our boy, James Gunn. They've given him the keys to the kingdom. I read the little Hollywood Reporter article. said he's been meeting with DC at their studio for weeks, maybe months. And this has been a long time coming. Peter Safran does have a good reputation. He's the producer of The Suicide Squad, Aquaman 1 and 2. Aqu Aquaman made a billion dollars, was pretty well liked among fans as well shazam one and two shazam another one which i did not like personally but a lot of people do that's one of the highest rated dc movies and peacemaker so he's got a good reputation i think he also came from like the uh, uh conjuring series i think that's where okay. he has roots but he's also a manager i think he was james gunn's manager at one point uh and and the important stuff here for at least a lot of nerds is that james gunn is going to basically get to be the Kevin Feige of DC, which is everything we've been asking for for how long now? I'm going to credit us. They finally listened to the Basement Boys and were like, who are we? They're like, oh, I didn't even think of James Gunn. That's a great call by Robbie and Clem. A couple of Barstool fans. Barstool changing the world yet again. I'm trying to think of how we could title this on the YouTube page of you know giving us credit for, for coming up with the idea. I don't even want – I think we even said in the video, like, we don't want commission. Um, we might have said it during the Suicide Squad or Peacemaker. It could have been both because that's just how fucking good James Gunn has been for DC. By far the two best projects we've seen – um for like characters nobody like you could throw batman dark knight like batman's batman right robbie's gonna love batman he's gonna cry reviewing batman no matter what happens other than that though they fucked up so many times and james gunn did what he did with guardians he took characters we didn't know or care about for the most part and he made us fucking love them so a plus move uh we said before the year began we gave our like midterm grades you know halfway through the year for dc and we said like what kind of a season is it this is a win. This is a big win oh, yeah. for fucking DC. This is this is beating like Brady and Belichick in New England in like not like September, but or like in Miami whenever they always lose. It's like winning in November right around Thanksgiving when those fuckers never lost. That's what I consider this kind of win. This is a franchise changing W for the DC universe. Is it like uh, is it kind of like uh, uh, Theo Epstein getting hired? How about that for a sports reference? All right, I'll take – look at Bob Fox dropping the sports <laughs> references. I out really around. reached down for that one. I was like, I know it's in there somewhere. So but I was like, Epstein? Is it Epstein? Yeah, not that Epstein, but it's Theo Epstein, yeah. So Theo Epstein going to the Red Sox is when Marvel brought James Gunn in for Guardians, right? It's like he's fucking good at what he does, um, and he crushed, obviously, Guardians. Then he, when he went to DC, that's Theo going to the Cubs. And it's like, we've been cursed forever. You just fucking, I, I guess Marvel wasn't cursed forever, but let's not forget before Iron Man and this latest MCU with Feige has made Marvel was kind of whatever, right? Uh, you know, their fucking franchises yes. were all yeah. over the place. There were hits, there were misses, but there was nothing like United. There was no flow. And now like, they are like, Hey, we'll bring that Epstein. We'll bring that guy here to fix our shit. The Cubs won the world series in 2016. And I think uh, this is enormous for DC. Now, I don't know anything about Peter Safran. I do know that a few months ago, I had someone tweet at me. and It was like a picture of like a mouse with cheese, like on a mousetrap. And they were saying like James Gunn would be that mouse if he went with some guy who worked for the WB and went to DC. So I don't know if Peter Safran is the mousetrap in this scenario or if that's someone completely different. I don't know any of that shit. I just know I fucking love James Gunn. I want DC to that be good. Been that Hamada guy. I think that was his name. I know that I'm not so well versed in like the actual suits, suits run, yeah. run DC and everything, but I think his name was Hamada and he ran DC and he was the one who got a lot of backlash for not wanting Henry Cavill back in the universe and everything. And like, seemed like he was making some not great decisions. He just stepped down. Maybe it was that guy. That could be it. That could be it. And again, let's not forget James Gunn, awesome creative mind. Uh, DC, tons of characters that could be awesome if done right. 
there's like a lot of weird shit. Like if you just look at all the all the statements about you know them hiring him, it's like WB Discovery hiring DC. Like there's a lot of weird corporate shit going on with this. It's bouncing from HBO to DC to Discovery Plus. Again, as someone that has a podcast with Uncle Chaps who watches Discovery Plus, and it's like um, thousand pound lovers and love on the spectrum and just weird kind of like reality shows you, you're not sure should exist in this crazy world we live in. I want to believe that this is all going to be good. I also think there is a chance like you hire a good manager, you hire good players, and then the ownership just fucks everything up. That could still happen. I don't think this is a slam dunk for DC, but it's fucking a hell of a lot better where, than where they were. Um, as a Batman fan, how do you feel knowing that James Gunn now has Batman in his control for better or worse? Thrilled. Mm -hmm. Thrilled. I don't, I don't know what he'll do necessarily because obviously we have – three batman currently in the dc universe and which ben is affleck, crazy let's crazy. just go acknowledge how crazy that is crazy ben affleck michael keaton and robert pattinson who i think they're gonna let matt reeves do his own thing in his own mm -hmm. universe they probably won't ever mesh that with like the dc eu uh i could see him bringing back affleck if he's down to do it I don't think he'll get a solo movie. I don't think Affleck's down to do like a Batman solo movie like that. But maybe you don't need that. Maybe you just have Batman as a supporting character in the DCEU because we've got a whole Batman universe with Matt Reeves. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of hoping that's what happens. I Let think... him be the cool guy, you know? Like he should, like kind of like he was in the Justice League cartoon. He shows up, he makes a couple cool quips, punches a couple guys in the face, gets out of there. Batman and everything. Put him in yeah. everything. And does this thing. And speaking of characters who have like seven different actors, let's just pump the brakes with Joker stuff now. I think like yes. I, I think they're doing the Joker movie they're is going doing, to exist. They're doing Joker two right now. Yeah, and that's going to exist. I think like independently of all the universes. I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, because that's in the seventies too. I think. Yeah. So like, there's probably projects that are going to be like pre-gun projects that they're. I don't think they're going to kill. We'll just let that go. I'm giving him like. It's kind of when you're rebuilding a team, you give that first year or two and you're like, all right, this is during rebuilding. There's probably a lot of shit that's already been out there. Uh, but I do think they, they have to just keep Batman going consistently. You have to fix it. Like, that has to be number one. You know, James Gunn's going to have a whiteboard just like our boy Flaggy does. And number one is going to be fix Superman. At some point, they need Superman to be good. If not I think great, that point is awesome. soon. Like, it seems like the wheels are in motion. Like, Henry Cavill made that post. Like, I'm back. Man of Steel 2 in production. Like, I don't know if it's going to be called that. Shouldn't be called that. I no. think what you do is you just make a fucking prime Superman movie where it's like he's fucking saving the people from airplane crashes and he's, you know, saving a baby from getting uh, whatever. Like, he's, he's doing all the awesome, happy Superman shit in a bright-ass costume. Give him the fucking red undies back. Make Superman what we all, like, remember Superman as. Make him fun. And make it a sequel where it's like a soft reboot. You got a soft reboot the Snyderverse in some way. I know a lot of Snyder fans are out there. They might not uh -oh, be happy Bob. about me saying that. <laughs> That's why I said son. soft reboot, okay? We're not going to retcon anything. But you can just make it where it just has a different vibe, a bit more of a friendlier vibe, a bit less snapping necks, breaking you know bones, and more of the, the smiles from Superman. But not the CGI smiles where they had to take the mustache out. Just the normal smiles. Just stuff like that. Just competence is what I'm asking for. As someone that went from, you know, and we're going a lot of sports analogies here. As a Mets fan, it's just, you would have the manager that would always just do the dumb thing, say the dumb thing, and then it becomes LOL Mets and it just becomes its fire. This year they had Buck Walter who just always just said the right thing. And he, if, if he had a tough question, he was like marvelous at like rephrasing the question and then just telling some story about how I was fishing down in Mississippi one time and caught me a, a mud cat. Why do they call them cats? They're not even cats. They're fish. And it's like, oh, Buck, I just love you. I just want James Gunn to turn all that negative and make it positive. You know, like the, the notorious B.I.G. did once upon a time in Brooklyn. So uh, I just, I don't know, man, I, as someone that wants it, I, and I, I made this point on Twitter and we've said this a bunch of time on the podcast. I want the DC universe to be good. Cause I like going to like good, fun superhero movies. I have kids that are going to like that. And that's something we're going to bond over. But also I think 
if the D- if DC gets better at the movies, it's then going to make Marvel know they have to step it up. And I compared it to the old Monday Night Wars, where WWF was basically just you know sitting on their throne for years as TBS was as uh, WCW was on TBS. Nobody cared that that it was fucking half empty arenas in North Carolina. Then Hulk Hogan goes to WCW. They start the NWO, and all of a sudden WWF is just getting murdered in the ratings. And then WWF created the Attitude Era to kind of be like, all right, fuck it, we're just going to let everything fly. And that made both companies raise their games to another level and the winners were the fans and that's what we are that's we're fucking nerds in the basement that love wrestling that love comic book movies and hopefully god willing both companies raise their games up and i mean let's be honest marvel should be on the path to do that just based on they're getting fucking these huge franchises coming into them fantastic four x-men at some point you know we're gonna have some deadpool we're gonna have all these different things plus the stuff that they've been working on we got kang kang's coming <laughs> up just so much shit going on with marvel but now i feel like they don't they don't like there's not just a safety net it's like well we're still just gonna kick the shit out of dc if dc shows up and starts you know if james gunn can make us care about a bunch of space superheroes that i had never heard of a few until a few years ago he's gonna make superman fucking awesome he's gonna make aquaman awesome he's gonna make batman better he's gonna make you know green light like green lantern just feels like a sleeping giant through all this all these fucking superheroes wonder woman they made wonder woman 1984 you told me because i didn't watch the movie they didn't have any music from 1984 what are we doing here james gunn is a mess he's a master of music too music the music's gonna be good in dc like you just need him to like give every dc movie a once over and suggest a couple songs and that's worth the money alone and however much you're paying him i think it's a four-year exclusive deal as well so the unfortunate aspect is the bittersweet at least is that of course he's not going to be working with marvel for the next four years probably not after that. You would imagine that he's probably done with that chapter. And we texted a little bit about it. I said, I think there's got to be something to his personal psyche. And I'm just assuming this where it's like when shit hit the fan, one company stood by him and hired him and said, do whatever you want. You could remake the Suicide Squad if you wanted to. And he fucking did it. And then the other company fired him and they eventually rehired him and welcomed him with open arms after the entire Guardians of the Galaxy cast said, we're not going to make another movie if you don't rehire him. But it's like, there's got to be some aspect of like, you know what? They really treated me well when everything was going down for me. So I I totally understand this move. And it's also like, man, you, you have the keys to the kingdom at this point. Like you are the Kevin Feige of DC. And I think our boy Justin Kroll tweeted, a big aspect of this is you just have Kevin Feige doing amazing presentations at every Marvel Comic Con presentation or whatever. Now you have James Gunn doing that for DC. DC has always kind of had like decent presentations, but never anything like Marvel, where now they can kind of do that. James Gunn at the uh, Hall H presentation for Guardians 3, he brought out the fucking uh, Living Tribunal or whatever. Like yep. Not the Living Tribunal. Uh, who's the guy that made Rocket Raccoon? Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we we talked about it on the um, on the podcast. Yeah, we did a whole thing. And people are screaming at us right now. <laughs> Rocket Raccoon, Creator. They're going, you're fake fans, you're noobs. They're screaming. No, in the basement, it's a happy place. We don't say that in the basement. High evolutionary. The high evolutionary. <laughs> That's who it was. That's who it was. We only looked it up for about three seconds. It was so quick. It was so quick. It. Seamless. That that's about it for the uh, James Gunn news. We'll see what comes of it. There's nothing obviously announced yet uh, on his slate, but I'm excited. I think Peacemaker season two is next for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And you said it perfectly. Like now, DC was able to stand behind him because they're in tatters. Disney is much more of like a buttoned up company. I'm sure Mickey Mouse wasn't loving like all these pedophile tweets or people were calling yeah. it pedophile tweets, whatever you want to call it. So they weren't loving that. I understand why they got rid of him. I thought it was an over, uh, you know, we live in a fucking crazy internet world. Let's call it what it is with the cancel culture and stuff like that. So I understand why James Gunn would be upset or, you know, understand. I also understand why Marvel did. It. I understand why DC did it. And in the end, like he was also like, he had a he had a ceiling, and the ceiling was Kevin Feige's office. You're not going to ever replace uh, Kevin Feige with James Gunn unless he has old tweets come out, right? So it's like that. It made perfect sense, and the fact that we were the ones who came up with the idea it just kind of it's on us now. Like if, if this is a, if this is a failure, it's on the basement boys, right? Because we came up with this yeah, idea. We're much. the ones who told DC to do it, so this is on us. But like you just said, Peacemaker season two is next, and I got like 
excited. And I could not give a fuck about a Peacemaker show before I saw it. And then it was like, I don't know. Would you say it was the best? Uh, would you say it was the best TV show, comic TV show of the year so far? I'm trying yeah, to think, I think like, so. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think back to all of them, but I, yeah, I think it yeah. was pretty far and away best for me. Yeah, I mean, it's up there with like just in terms of all the Disney Plus ones in general since it started. Like, it's usually Loki you'll throw in the mix. Like, we love, we like She Hulk a lot. It dusted yeah. She Hulk. It, yeah, that you can't compare the two. Yeah. So, and I don't think he's going to be directing a lot. I think he'll try to just take the red pen, make some corrections, maybe put a little. I think what? he'll still do some movies here and there. I think he'll he'll keep up with like his regular schedule. Yeah, and I think of, like he, a movie every two, three years or whatever. And this is the one thing that does concern me because um, it's not just all sunshine and rims. He has a very unique. Um, his movies have like a theme, a flavor to them almost, right? Yeah. With the comedy and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't work for everything. I think he knows it won't work for all different kinds of superheroes. Um, I'm just hoping that he's able to, I hope the DC just doesn't just become the, the Gunniverse because that will be <laughs> a little much, right? It's like yeah. the cool thing about Marvel. I think he gets it. that too, though. I yeah, feel 100%. Like he that. He's a lot smarter, a lot, lot, <laughs> lot, 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 lot smarter and creative than I am. So uh, I think he'll be fine. And just quick, like you touched on, uh, you, you mentioned it. Like I kind of, buried James Gunn and the Guardians in my mind when he said third's the last one. I figured he wasn't going to be doing yeah. Marvel movies for four years at least. So it's like it sucks as someone that considers the Guardians his favorite franchise. But it, it kind of is what it is. So a uh, big, big shout out to us for getting this, uh, getting the ball rolling on all this. And um, we're going to do a Black Adam review, which will be out at some point. It'll be up on the My Moss Basement YouTube tomorrow. Okay. I think this is going to help their end of year grades. This and the Black Adam. So that's two for two for them. So that's big win all around for DC here.